Have you ever felt lost or questioned what you want to do with your life? Well, we all have, to be a matter of fact. No matter how old you get, and no matter how many experiences we have, there are always some points in our life when we question ourselves if what we are doing is right or if we are still headed in the right direction. And we still can't seem to find a clue on what to do with our life. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Munif, a self-made multimillionaire, and I'm here to help you succeed in your own personal growth. When we are young, adults often ask us, what do you wanna do when you grow up? And as a child, we confidently would wanna say, I wanna be a doctor or a firefighter or a police officer, or a lawyer, a teacher or a president. We're so confident and so sure of what we wanna do. But as we get older, sometimes we realize that being a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher or anything else is not enough. Sometimes we might feel that something's missing. We feel unfulfilled and thus we feel lost. So we try to find that missing piece. But have you ever stopped for a moment and pondered that maybe you're asking yourself the wrong question? Asking yourself what to do with your life seems so vague and broad that even the answers themselves would shy away from you. So that's why in today's video, I will share with you some specific questions you need to ask yourself in solitude that may help you figure out what to do to define purpose in your life. By answering this question, what do you like building or creating or are you perhaps fond of maintaining things? By answering this question, you can get an idea of what kind of work you want. Suppose you want to build or create something from scratch, something like product or web design or architecture or engineering, animator, or illustrator, fashion, interior design or perhaps a YouTube content creator. On the other hand, maybe you're not too fond of creating things but want to maintain what has already been built. For instance, maybe an accountant who maintains financial records and books, a doctor who follows already established medical procedures, or a teacher who follows an established and approved teaching manual. Think it through. What is it that you enjoy? Building or creating something for nothing or maintaining and improving something that's already built? Do you prefer working on something with your existing skill set? Or do you want to work on something while learning a new thing? Ask yourself if your current work uses your existing skill set or if you need to learn new things to constantly keep your game up. And which are you more comfortable with? Do you enjoy learning new things or does it stress you out? There is nothing wrong with choosing one over the other. While making use of your existing skill set sounds like you being stubborn, but what if you were exceptional at it? You're so good at your existing skill set that even if I blindfolded you, you would still be able to accomplish that task. That's an exaggeration, but what I mean is you know how to stand out. On the other hand, learning new things at each and every turn sounds great to you, and you get to know a variety of things, and you can be adaptable to whatever and wherever you go, but what if that stresses you out too much? Learning new skills means learning from point blank, which requires effort and hard work. Both have good points, but most important thing is which one makes you feel the best and which one do you feel the most comfortable at? Now let's go on to the third question. What level of freedom can you exercise? Are you working where you get to decide everything? Or perhaps are you limited to what your bosses or clients are telling you? Are you comfortable making all the decisions in your work? Or does it stress you out? Or perhaps you prefer doing something for the company based on what they want. If you're an independent writer, you get to decide everything on your own. Your own concept, your characters, your plot, the twists without interference from anyone else. The same as being a content creator or a YouTuber. You get to decide the content, the settings, and all of that. There's very few restrictions like algorithms and your audience, but you are primarily responsible for it. Think about whether you enjoy that degree of freedom or maybe you are more comfortable working with someone or doing something for them and whatever company you work for. Number four, how much interaction do you prefer? Are you working alone or collaborating with a group of people? If you're interacting with people at large like politician or a public school teacher, or maybe you like interacting with a small group of people like your direct super supervisor or clients. Think about how much interaction you prefer. There's no right or wrong answer. It'll just tell you the kind of work set up that will satisfy you. Number five, what level of authority are you comfortable with? Are you the type who likes to lead people? It's probably more like me. I can be led, but I tend to be more the type that likes to lead people. Or perhaps you're the kind who doesn't wanna be bothered with managing other people. There are two types of people, those who enjoy leading, like a politician, and those who'd rather work independently, like writers. Personally, I like to leave my employee management to my managers so that I could focus on bigger picture items. 
especially regarding my businesses. The next question is, do you want to be in the spotlight? Think about whether you want to be in the front line or would you prefer working backstage? For example, actors, singers, dancers, influencers, corporate leaders, to name a few, are jobs that require you to be on stage. They require you to put yourself out there and garner attention. On the other hand, cameramen, choreographers, and writers and accountants are a few jobs that like to work behind the scenes. Think about which side you want and how much attention you can tolerate. Although it doesn't necessarily have to be black and white. For example, I like to be backstage on most of my companies, but nowadays I'm taking a more of a front stage approach as the brands have all kind of been built out. There are jobs out there that even though are mostly behind the scene, you still need some interaction and you still end up getting a bit of attention. Accountants, for example, they're usually behind the scenes working on confidential pieces of information. So they're usually separated from the rest of the workers, but they need to interact with bosses and see CEOs and members of the board, and as well as external auditors and sometimes even government officials. On the other hand, YouTubers put themselves in front of the camera to reach thousands of viewers, but in reality, they're working with just a handful of people that do the behind scenes stuff, like writing, and scripting, and video editing, and setup for lights and equipment. So what level of the spotlight you can tolerate? The other question, do you have a work-life balance? Are you working from home or on site? Is your personal life a priority rather than your work life? Do you wish to spend more time with your family or at work? Would you rather work in comfortable clothes or do you prefer to flex in a suit and dress up? So think about your priorities and where do you want to spend the time? People have different preferences. Like I could work all day and night, but I like a couple of hours during the week to spend time with my family. Some people feel suffocated staying at home and rather be out in the world and meet a bunch of people, but some would just prefer being at home base and dealing with the hassle and the hustle and the bustle. Some people don't mind commute and the preparation for work itself. So think about what your priorities are. For me, because I like solitude, I don't mind working from home, but if I have an office, I like to have a quiet environment. Now I'm done with these specific questions. We're back to what it is that you want to do in your life. And if you've noticed, these questions always end up with what you think, what you prefer, what you're comfortable with. And what this means, it all comes down to the interests that you have the most. Pursue something that you think is interesting and work hard at it. And when you're young and very certain of what we want along the way we grow up we become uncertain and doubtful sometimes this is because we're experiencing life and realizing new things each day we don't know anything about certain things until you experience them for instance i have a friend who's very eager to get a job and work from home setup he was fed up with the traffic and increasing transportation costs and plus a four-hour round-trip travel on this 405 nightmare of a freeway in los angeles and after months of applying he finally landed a full-time gig from home he's very excited at first and very eager until he started he didn't like it at all he got bored being at home and got into some heated family discussions while he was at home found it very distracting he was inside that house 24 7 and on top of it his electric bill and some of his food bill also increased he felt like he couldn't relax because he was always around his workstation this shows that you really don't know what you don't know until you experience it so go out there and experience as much as possible when you're young and build as many skills as you possibly can if you don't go out there you won't experience life You'll only be left with the questions, what if? And while you're at it, don't just work, but also observe. If it helps, write down what you like and don't like at your current job. What are you feeling while you're doing those jobs or tasks? Just write down all of your thoughts. In doing so, you evaluate your inner thoughts. And it would be easier for you to see where you want to go and what you want to do. I always make this kind of content, especially for our younger folks, to give you more direction. As always, thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video valuable. And if you do, please go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to know more qualities of highly successful people, check out this video, the top 10 qualities of highly successful people next.